all right hello everyone and peace of christ to all of you please invite your friends as you know this account we use it as a backup so not many people knows about it uh, so share uh, whatever you can uh, you know uh, uh, we have a gift and the gift always is muslims muslims are really a gift for us as a christians and we should use their uh, special skills to expose islam and that's what we are doing today somebody said in the text i'm exposing farid no i'm not exposing farid Farid is no one. We are exposing the big fat liar Muhammad. Uh, this guy, he made a video, and actually some other videos, they have even my name in it. Even they put a picture, they supposedly this is me. And I look handsome there, which is nice. Uh, but anyway, they say I'm hiding my face, but so who is that picture there? <laughs> anyway, did the sheep eat the Quran? Farid respond to David. And David, if he's sorry for you, because Farid, who speak like, uh, <clears throat> and he blink with his eyes, is going to eat your life. Listen carefully to the super intelligent answer. Demonstrating the gap between me and David Woods. There's a gap. Roll it. Roll it, please. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult 10 times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the Messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it. The seventh century version of the dog ate my homework was apparently a sheep ate my Quran verses. Firstly, I want to deal with this silly idea that the Quran was lost because of a sheep. Did this happen? No, it didn't. For this to have been the cause, we would need to assume that nobody had this verse memorized. And this verse was indeed memorized and known by the companions. We actually do have examples in which Umar, Ubay, Zayd bin Thabit, and others have quoted it. More importantly though, did a sheep really eat some of the Quran? Wait, 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 wait. First, this liar, he just showed us a hadith about the stoning to death. But the story contained two stories, two chapters or verses in the Quran are eaten by the goat. So he showed us a hadith saying that they memorize the verse of his story to death. Okay, what about the breastfeeding? Do you memorize it? And I challenge Fifi to recite for us the verses of uh, breastfeeding for adult in time. You see how stupid they are? Because the story, it doesn't say only that the goat ate only the stone into death. So when you show me a hadith saying, oh, you know, uh, we memorize this one. Uh, uh, it says a shaykh who was shaykh. Hold on, hold on. First of all, you don't memorize it. You have two words of it. Secondly, if you memorize it, so why it's not there? He will say to you that this verse is abrogated by recitation. And by writing. So what I mean, do stoning to death for somebody commit adultery, he is married or she is married. So look at this madness. They say to us the goat did not eat it, but the goat ate it. Secondly, you do not memorize the verse because this is this is there's no this is a hadith. This is a hadith, this is not Quran. And as long as it's not a Quran, then you cannot say potato. Potato is useful. To recite for us the very breastfeeding for a lot uh, uh, story, Aisha herself, as we see in the height in front of us, which is absolutely sahih, she used to order her sisters and her nieces to do breastfeeding for anyone want to enter upon her, which mean Aisha, she practiced that, and Aisha. She did not see what Mr. Farid will say to us in a few minutes. Believe. Listen carefully. I do not believe that it did. And here's my evidence. Hmm. You need to focus here, David. Hmm. All right? Okay. I'm going to try to keep it simple. We have a chain of narrations. Hmm. Aisha, she narrates a hadith to Amra. Hmm. Amra narrates it to Abdullah ibn Abu Bakr. Hmm. To Susu. Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr narrates it to two people, Susu and Malik mm. and Ibn Ishaq. Mm -hmm. When Malik narrates the hadith, 
he says that suckling was abrogated. Mm -hmm. When Ibn Ishaq narrates it, he narrates... Take notes, please. Farid is talking, everybody shut up. There's four possibility. Farid is talking. Malik was correct. Hmm. Malik, number one possibility, Malik was correct. That this verse is abrogated. Ibn Ishaq was correct. Ibn Ishaq was correct. Both were correct? Both they were correct? Or both were wrong? Or both were wrong? I mean, this you are genius. I have to admit, you are genius. I mean, there's... All right? Or Ibn Ishaq is correct. Or both are correct. Or both are wrong. Okay, hold on. Why you did not add more? Because you can say, what about uh, this guy is wrong and this guy is, 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 is uh, right? I mean, look at this. Suddenly you jump, two of them are wrong. There's options that maybe Malik is wrong or Ibn Ishaq is wrong or vice versa. And he jumped that. But anyway, he have his own logic. So we have to listen to his logic and let us die laughing together. Listen carefully. Continue, brother. Is there any supporting proof for any of these conclusions? Hmm. Aisha narrates a hadith to Amra. Hmm. Amra narrates it to Al Qasim bin Muhammad, hmm. who narrates it to his son hmm. Abdul Rahman, hmm. who narrates it to two people, hmm. Hamad bin Salama and Ibn Ishaq again. Hmm. When Hamad narrates a hadith, he says a suckling verse was abrogated. When Ibn Ishaq narrates the hadith, he narrates that adult suckling was eaten by a sheep you just to show you how stupid this guy is so if one of them said it's abrogated and the other one he says it eaten by the by the goat there's no there's no there's no contradiction there i mean you're you're a certified donkey you're a certified donkey because a verse is abrogated there's many verses in the quran they are abrogated but they are in the quran You are really a certified donkey, isn't it? The muta is one of them as an example, but it's in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 24. So when you say it's abrogated, it should, it should be in the Quran. You see, you just say to us that he said it's abrogated. Does it say abrogated by recitation? Does it say, no, you just said it's abrogated. So abrogating a verse, that is not a problem until now. The other one saying suckling was eaten by the goat, he did not contradict the other one because it may be abrogated and eaten by the goat too. Now look, the conclusion. Give us the conclusion, brother. Again, notice the differences. Is it possible that Malik, Hamad, and Yahya were all mistaken? Unlikely. Why not? Because simply they are carrying news. Secondly, you are the one who said that the same news come again to Ibn Ishaq. So Ibn Ishaq adding one more will not make any difference. Just to show you how they try to deceive you. As long the hadith end to Ibn Ishaq, and this is what Ibn Ishaq said. Right? And you said that Al Qasim he reported Ibn Muhammad, and then Abdul Rahman to Ibn Al Qasim, and then Ibn Ishaq, he received the same thing. So either you have to say that Ibn Ishaq is a liar, and you don't dare to say so, because there's nothing here that's called wrong. You see, stupidity is amazing. What do you mean wrong? Either he's lying, or he is saying the truth. There's no wrong here. This is about reporting what they said. So how I can be wrong? And saying that the goat ate it, it cannot be wrong because here there is a different story. There's like a hello, a goat ate the Quran. The story is a damn sheep ate the Quran. He did not say it's abrogated, and he add like a uh, and uh, we do not know when. No, he is talking about something special. In the time of the death of Muhammad, the goat came and flipped the Muhammad from the bed and eat the Quran and maybe eat Muhammad beard because God they eat everything remember the the uh, 
The verse was under the pillow of Aisha. So what Ibn Ishaq and Aisha reporting is not something small. This is a big deal. In order for the goat to eat the Quran, Muhammad is dead and he is in the top of the bed in the top of the pillow so in order for the goat to eat the quran not only she is going to go and eat it she had to flip muhammad from the pillow flip him from the bed jump in the top of him and then meh and eat the quran so this is exactly what happened because remember this is the bed of aisha where muhammad he died and this is where the quran is now look how this liar what he said he said that Maybe, or let us say the conclusion that there is uh, 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 one said the goat ate it, the others they did not say the goat ate it. And that make the others are the winners. But let us get him busted. This is islamweb.net. I will post the link for you in the chat. It is an Arabic, yes, but you can use Google Translation to translate. All right, it's it's in Arabic, but you can translate. This guy want to give you a conclusion that this hadith obviously wrong. It is not true, but all Muslims agree that this hadith, and and by the way, he said there is a book. It says this is daif. Let it get, let us get you busted. Question: Fatwa number. You see, this is not me saying this is official Islamic website and those are big shakes, not like this potato doing jihad over the internet instead of joining Al-Qaeda like his prophet, as he said. Islamweb.net, fatwa number 12905, and this is the number in Arabic. And here they are asking a question about this hadith, if it's correct or not. I will click translation in front of you, translate to English. This is the question about the hadith, the same exact hadith we are talking about. All right. I mean, the page is jumping. I'm not sure why. Uh -huh. What's wrong with this page? It's acting up. When I scroll up, okay, let me move this thing down. All right. As you see here, this is what he said to us. Abu Salama, blah, 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 blah. To Muhammad ibn Ishaq, blah, 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 blah. Is this hadith a sahih? This is the question. If there is evidence that this hadith is sahih, the answer, read carefully. This hadith was narrated by Imam Ibn Majah and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and Abu Ali Ibn, and, and, uh, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, blah, 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 and Tabarani, blah, 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 and this is originally mentioned in a sahihain, and it is a sahih hadith. It is a valid hadith, you potato. It's a clarified as a valid hadith, sahih. There's a translation for the sahih. So you are a big dumb potato liar and you've been spanked. The same as last time you said that Aisha, she was not 14. And we show you the hadith where it says that Aisha, she was, uh, you, you say you were answering David Wood saying that Aisha, she reached the age of puberty. And we show you the hadith where it says that at the age of 14, still she did not have it, you cow a potato. So this hadith is valid. It's sahih. And you are a potato and you get busted. And this is not David Wood saying that. And this is not Christian Prince saying that. This is your scholars. And this is your website. This is the game they play always. Anything will make Islam look stupid, dummy, garbage. Hey, this hadith, it's just, it, it, there is only one or two ways, three ways, brother. And this guy reported and this guy. All the scholars, as you see, they agree. He show us a book, nobody, nobody even read. Here we have the scholars. Who are they? Look, who, look, look at the big names they are mentioning in this page here. Big, huge names. And he's lying to us saying, ah, this is not a valid hadith. The same game will never stop. It's a valid. Now, 
even though he tried to lie about it, but he helped us a lot. And I will show you how. So I'm really thankful for this Fifi for the work he do. Actually, me, myself, I should donate for him. Look at this. Listen carefully what he will say. And then you will see why I'm very grateful for having those people because they help us to expose Islam. Eaten by a sheep. Again, notice the differences. Is it possible <laughs> that Malik, Hamad, and Yahya were all mistaken? Unlikely. Especially when we are aware that Malik and Yahya are top tier narrators of hadith, unlike Ibn Ishaq. Exactly. You see? Malik and Yahya, they are top narrator, and this is why actually in the hadith it says that this is like even in their in their website it says Hassan. Even in their website it says Hassan. I mean look at the stupidity. And now we showed you here it says Sahih. And this is mentioned by the highest scholars. It's agreed upon. And 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 what Tabarani and 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 Wa Ibn Qutayba and 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 this and Wa Asluhu fi Sahihin and the origin of it it was in the two Sahih. Wa Awradahu Ibn Hazm fi Al Muhalla wa 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 Qal Hada Hadith on Sahih and he said this is a Sahih Hadith and this is the Arabic. So for those who speak Arabic. Now, I will go with you, just for the sake of fun. What do you want to say to us? Due to this, the report was rejected. Now, keep in mind, it wasn't rejected. Hold on. You see? He just shown us a book which nobody no, is nobody care for. Because when the, when, the, when the Muslim Sunni, they ask the question, if this hadith is valid or not, the answer in front of you in Islam web, they did not mention that it's rejected. So this guy, he spent the night to find a book to say it's rejected. <laughs> However, I'm going to go with you. Let us say this hadith is rejected and... Just now, it's been rejected a thousand years ago by Jarqani and Jarqani. other scholars. Yeah, Jarqani? That is how you His name is Jarqani. Analysis, David. Uh -huh. That is how you study a hadith. Now, let's just check out David's interpretation. Oh, no, 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 no. Before we go, just to show how stupid you are, you are stuck now because you just said that this hadith was abrogated. What is the abrogated verses? <laughs> you see, if the hadith, he is saying it was abrogated, and according to him, this is the correct answer it was abrogated. Okay. Where we can find the verses which abrogated the ten breastfeeding for adult. Can you recite them for us? Obviously, the goat ate all the Quran. The one which is ten time and the one is five time. Otherwise, I want you to recite for us the five time. Secondly, by saying it's abrogated, that's mean you agreed that you're a prophet, he or the women to give their boobs to adult, saying to us it's abrogated. Abrogated how many times? Just, the abrogation is just about how many times? You see, the abrogation is not like canceling the verse. It is about how many times? If we go in the hadith, we will find the following. Abrogated by five times. Okay, where we can find the five times? They say to you, abrogated by recitation. So not a single Muslim, he knew the recitation of the verses of a breastfeeding for adult 10 times or 5 times. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this before? If you are going to follow it and practice it, where is the 5 time? And what is the proof that this is really was exist? If you decide to forget it, if this is Quran, who who is show me where where your prophet and your Allah said those ten time verses I abrogate them? <laughs> Can you show me? <laughs> so what they have is is a guy saying to a guy, the guy said to the other guy, the guy said to the other guy that this is abrogated. 
Muslim don't follow Allah. They are following a guy. He said about a guy. The guy said to the other guy. So now what we confirm for us, based in the answer of uh, uh, Fifi, that breastfeeding for adult is not a hocus. It's true. All what he is saying, it is abrogated. That is a clear evidence that Muhammad is a scumbag. There is no way a person he have little dignity he will order women to do such a thing. Second here, it was ten time and now became five time. What a different! Just show you, to, just to show you the stupidity. Who is the one who said you do it ten time first time? Fifi will say Allah. Okay, so Allah said, do ten time. Sucking, not suckling, because this is all is about sucking women nipples, because there is no suck, there is no milk. This woman, she is not even in the age to have babies. Do thy ten times sucking. Okay, Allah abrogate the verse by what? By making it five times. What? What is that? Allah, He found that ten time is not good. Do it. Five time sucking. <laughs> and he cannot say he don't agree with this because he is the one who said it's abrogated. The abrogated uh, abrogation by what? Abrogation by making it five sucking, as you see. But we cannot find the ten time and we cannot five, find the five time. And this hadith we showed you, it's agreed upon and it's sahih. In the top of that, what kind of God he say he do it ten time and then he changed his mind to five time. What's the difference between ten time and five time? Why it was okay for ten time and then Allah he changed his mind for five time. And you, by the way, according to the Muslim Sunni themselves, if you suckle a woman and you are adult and you do it five or ten time or one thousand times, still you can have sex with her. So what's the point of this garbage? Nothing. And what kind of God he says do it ten times and then after a few weeks he say it uh, five times? What does that mean? What about make it eleven times? Why not nine times? And what is the purpose of this? Stupidity. So what if he confirmed to us that there is abrogation, but now we cannot find the abrogation too. He confirmed to us that there was a breastfeeding for adult, but it's not in the Quran. And he's saying it's abrogated. But if a verse is abrogated, why is it not in the Quran? He will say to you, oh, there is an Islam. There is something called abrogation, abrogation by recitation. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing? Why you want to abrogate by recitation, but you want to follow the order? Like the stoning to death. And he deceived, he deceived us or tried to deceive us saying, Oh, we have the verse for stoning to death, a shaykh wa shaykha. But he did not recite for us the other part of the story that the breastfeeding for adult was eaten by the goat. And now as long as you are saying it's abrogated by five times, can you recite for us the five time verse? You cannot. Can you recite for us the ten time? You cannot. In the top of that, we have a problem. As long as this hadith is a lie, and this verse is abrogated according to Fifi Mimi Sushu, and we heard him saying clearly that obviously Ibn Ishaq is a liar. He said it's he's wrong because he's a coward. He didn't dare to say the word liar because there is no way. It's, there's nothing is called wrong. Either he's a liar or telling the truth. What wrong? Because here there is different story. He is saying that sheep enter the house and ate the Quran. This is not about wrong. This is about either fabricating a story, which will make him a liar, which means you Muslim should not accept any hadith from Ibn Ishaq, and that will make you in trouble because you will leave, you will lose everything you have. Or you accept Ibn Ishaq, and we show you that Muslims accept Ibn Ishaq, and this guy is a liar. However. As long as it's abrogated, why Aisha is practicing it? Listen carefully. Possible that Malik, Hamad, and Yahya were all mistaken. No way. Unlikely. Unlikely. Especially when we are aware that Malik. You see the coward. He don't. He don't dare to say he is lying or lying. He say mistaken because he's a coward. He don't dare to say the word lying. And as we as we said, it's very clear. 
There's no way, there's no place of mistake here. Muhammad he said, anyone who fabricate a hadith on me, he will sit in a chair of fire and hell fire. So this is very serious. And this is a fabrication. Malik and Yahya are top tier narrators of hadith. And Ibn Ishaq is not top? Hmm. Unlike Ibn Ishaq. Oh, Ibn Ishaq is not. <laughs> Due to this, uh -huh. the report was rejected. By who? Keep in mind, it wasn't rejected just now. Mm. It's been rejected a thousand years ago by Jorqani. His name is not Jorqani. His, his name is Jorqani, you idiot. You don't know even how to read Arabic. Other scholars. Mur murra, murra, murra. <laughs> that is how you do an Isnad analysis, David. That is how you study a hadith. Uh -huh. Now, let's just check out David's interpretation of this report. The sheep didn't just eat the Quran verses on breastfeeding adults. It also ate the Quran verse on stoning adulteresses. Aisha was once accused of adultery, and if Muhammad hadn't received a special revelation proclaiming her innocence, she could have been stoned to death. The accusation of adultery was one of the reasons she became so careful about having her sister and nieces help her follow the breastfeeding rule. She was trying to protect herself. We don't need Sherlock Holmes to uncover Aisha's fear of the verse of stoning. And her sheep ate the only copy. Coincidence? No. Conspiracy. So according to David Wood, um, excuse me, Dr. David Wood, Aisha, who was acquitted of the allegation of adultery years ago, feared that the charge might come back and therefore she... Um, got a sheep to eat a part of the Qur'an. Uh, there's a few issues with this um, theory. Hmm. I can't believe I'm doing this, but... I can't believe it too. The issues are, one, she was already acquitted. Two, the verse of stoning was memorized by other companions. Three, the Sahaba continued to stone those that committed adultery regardless. Four, and perhaps most... Uh, just to show you that you are a stupid idiot. Aisha, she was accused and she was acquitted by Allah supposedly. Muhammad, he made a verse because this is will touch his honor. Number two, brother, who dared to stone Aisha after Muhammad's death? Number three, brother, uh, I like it when you move your mouth and you blink with your eyes about Aisha. Aisha, and you just said, she ordered her nieces to do breastfeeding. You see, he did not say this hadith is wrong. Listen carefully. He did not say that. He did not oppose what David said about Aisha ordering her nieces to do breastfeeding. Listen carefully. Herself. We don't need Sherlock Holmes to of adultery was one of the reasons she became so careful about having her sister and nieces help her follow the breastfeeding rule. So this is what David said. What Fifi said? He did not say he refused this hadith. He did not say this is weak. She was trying to protect herself. <laughs> we don't need Sherlock Holmes to uncover Aisha's fear of the verse of stoning. And her sheep ate the only copy. Coincidence? No. Conspiracy. So according to David Wood, um, excuse me, Dr. David Wood, Aisha, who was acquitted of the allegation of adultery years ago, hmm. feared that the charge might come back and therefore she um, got a sheep to eat a part. No, no, I have another theory. I have a theory that you Muslims are ashamed of the breastfeeding for a lot and this is why you claim that the goat ate it. I believe the one who ate it is Aisha. <laughs> because remember, there's two things are eaten by the goat, not only stoning to death. And do you coward? Do you order your wife, if Mimi Hijab come to visit you, do you order your wife to give her breast so he will suckle her? Do you practice it? Because you just said it's abrogated by five times. When Mimi Hijab, he come to your house, did you order your wife to give her boobs to Mimi? And he suckled her five times? You don't do that, right? Because you will say this is not honorable. Shame on you to say that. Well, shame on you too.
saying, I want to defend it. Because you're the one who said, it's abrogated. Abrogated by what? By five times. Do you see stupidity? When he agreed that this verse is abrogated, he agreed that he is going to follow breastfeeding for adult five times. Because it's abrogated by five times. The height is very clear. Do you see it? <laughs> now, listen carefully what he will say. I, I love it, actually. <laughs> Thank you for the one who sent me this video. <laughs> I don't watch his videos, but the guy he sent it to me, he said, I think you will like it. Part of the Quran. Uh, there's a few issues with this um, theory. Hmm, theory. I can't believe I'm doing this, but... There is there is there is something special about this guy. Even his battery is dying, or he is something. I don't know. I'm not going to say. Okay, just tied up the screws, man. You are going to almost. What is that? Speak like a man. The issues are uh -huh. one. She was already acquitted. Uh -huh. Two. The verse of stoning was memorized by other companions. <laughs> hey, no, she wasn't acquitted by the way, because the Shia until now they accuse her that she is a whore. There's tons of videos in YouTube accusing Aisha she was a whore. And not only that, there's a hadith which the Muslims agree upon that Aisha, she used to decorate girls so she can hunt young men from Quraysh. And let me get the hadith for you so you will not say I'm making things up. <laughs> Acquitted. What about the Shia? Remember, Ali became a caliphate in the time of Aisha. And Aisha, she went in war to kill Ali. And she caused the death of tens of thousands. Yes, she had fear. She had fear that Ali and the Shia, they are going to get her. Stop playing games. Now, let us see. The hadith of لَعَلَّنَا نَصْطَادُ شَبَابًا مِنْ قُرَيْشِ Is it sahih, brother? Let us see if it is sahih. Let me see first if I can find this hadith in the English website. I'm not sure if we can find it. Because Aisha, she continued practicing prostitution after Muhammad's death. Um, I look like we cannot find it here, but let us see in different place. Hold on. This is the book, it's called Al-Musannaf. مَا قَالُوا فِي أَجَّارِيَ تُشَوَّفَ وَيُطَافُ بِهَا What they said about a slave girl, young slave girl, she go around to, to be showed off to, to men, to people. And what is the purpose? Let us read together. I will switch it to Google browser so we can... Uh, Use Google Translation, as long as we could not find it in English directly. This is again Islam islamweb.net. The book of Al-Musannah, Kitab al-Nikah, the book of effing, to eff each other. This is the name of the book. So obviously this is about sex. What they said about a, a slave girl to be shown and to take it around, to take her around, to, to be shown to people. Hadith. حدثنا أبو بكر قال عن وكيع بلا 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 to make it short that عائشة أنها شوفت جارية وطافت بها وقالت لعلنا نصطاد بها شبابا من قريش what she did she put makeup and nice clothing sexy clothing in a slave girl and she walk her around in order to hunt the boys, the young men of Quraysh. Translation. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with this website. It's jump. The design, I think, like, let's see if we can make it this way. I'm trying to show the hadith. Look, it says it's eating the thing. 
Okay. Finally. From 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 the authority from the authority from the authority that Aisha, she, showing a female, she it says had seen a female a maid, to walk around with her and said, we may hunt Quraysh youth. <laughs> So Aisha, she was acquitted in the time of Muhammad, but after he died, obviously she continued his, her prostitution. She is, she is walking with a nice, sexy female slave girl, using her as a bait. So youth, young men from the tribe of Quraysh, they will follow Aisha to her house and do boom, boom with her. Is this hadith is accepted? Absolutely. But for sure, he will say to you, no, we don't accept it. Hello? I mean, this is disgusting. What are you talking about? And look here the advice. After Aisha, she practiced that, all the Muslims, they start practicing this. The Muslim they start practicing decorating, putting makeup on female slaves, and they make her walk around so they can get customers. Because pimping became a big business after the Muslim they conquered their neighbors. Even the verses in the Quran confirm that. He said, Force not your daughter, your, your slaves into prostitution. If they choose not to do the business and if you force them Allah is all forgiving there's no punishment for forcing a slave girl to walk as a prostitute do you see it and force not your maids into prostitution if they desire chastity which mean if they desire chastity and if you force them, it's, uh, Allah is all forgiving. There is no punishment. For this is but we became a big business. Aisha, she is practicing the business of prostitution the same as the rest of the Muslims. But she don't dare to do it herself, go and hunt men because she is the wife of the Prophet. What she do? She sent a slave girl, walk with her, showing her face, showing her skin. So men, they will follow the girl and they will go to her bedroom. Now, if you want to say to me, this is not the purpose, then you need to tell us why she is, what is the purpose to decorate a girl and then they follow the girl and then they go to her house and she is saying it clearly because we wanted to hunt young men from Quraysh. Uh, I will try to find the hadith in English just for the sake of fun. Uh, still, this one is not. Uh, but anyway, we knew what he will say. He will say this hadith is weak. Anything they don't like, anything is embarrassing, they will say it's weak. However, what he said to us is very important. Let us finish what he said so we can have the comedy complete. Three, the Sahaba continued to stone those that committed adultery regardless. Four, and perhaps most ironically, mm. Aisha herself taught the Muslims that those that commit adultery are to be stoned. Mm -hmm. So run along, David. You are not my class. Okay, hold on. Stoning to the death, death adultery, uh, uh, David, you were not successful. What about the breastfeeding for adult? You see, you coward, you said, that obviously that the, the, the three against one, and obviously Ibn Ishaq is wrong about the breastfeeding for adult and about the, the goat eating the thing. But what about Aisha practicing breastfeeding for adult? Did Aisha practice breastfeeding for adult?
Yes, she did. So if the verse is abrogated, Aisha, she is practicing what? What she was practicing? You said this is abrogated. And there is tons of hadith is speaking about the same thing and those are sahih correct hadith. She ordered her nieces and her sisters to do breastfeeding for adult. But there is no verse in the Quran no more. So Aisha, yes, she is protecting herself, claiming that if a man he enter upon her, now he can do it. Nobody will accuse her with adultery, as David he said, because simply this was a way to protect herself from being accused of being sleeping around. So she say, okay, the Prophet, he practiced that and he ordered that. Actually, even the wives of Muhammad, the rest of the wives, they said to her, no. We believe this is was a license to that woman alone. But obviously it's not a license for that woman because as you see, it's a verse from Allah. Breast feeding and abrogated by five times still for the public, not for one woman. Because that woman already she did it ten times. She do not need to do it twice. Abrogated by five times. This is not only a disaster, this is a joke. Aren't you ashamed even to agree that yes, your God, Allah, he ordered women to give their boobs to adult? Aren't you ashamed that your God, he abrogated ten times by five times? What is that, a joke? And what the difference between five times and ten times? If I suckle a woman boobs ten times or five times, what is the difference? Why we change it? The taste different? Did your God found himself that he is a stupid so he decided to make it five times? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> I find always Muslims' answers is hilarious and they are very helpful. All those hadith is about breastfeeding for adult. The man even have a beard. She said, I'm going to feed him. He have a beard. He have a beard. She said what? He have a beard. He have what? She said, how I'm going to suckle him and he has a beard. And supposedly, if she gave her boobs to this man, the husband will not be upset no more from this guy. <laughs> and then Allah, he made the verses about it and he said that he made the Quran. And then Allah, he abrogated the verse. And then Allah, he changed the number of 10 to 5. What, what this is about? This is about a man. He is a mad person making fun of the Muslims have no respect to Muslim women, making fun of them, and they are you, he is using them. Even Aisha, she was saying, well, uh, uh, you know, uh, the prophet, he ordered it, so I am going to practice it. Aisha, she said, don't you see that Allah Messenger model for you? She also said, the wives of Abu Hudayfa said, Messenger of Allah, Salim, come to me and now grow up, man, person. So who is the model? Muhammad teaching 
and she is given an example why she is doing breastfeed for adult and this is Sahih Muslim a person who you he reached the age of a property he cannot enter to Aisha unless she either suckle him or one of her sisters suckle him so if this verse is abrogated, abrogated there's no obligation still you have to practice it because ten times five times doesn't make any difference what is the five time verses we cannot find it look at this hadith which is very sahih hadith Yahya related to me and he is the one who said that Yahya is a top and Malik is top did he say that go back in the video he said Yahya is top from 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 she said Abdullah ibn Umar informed me and for him that Aisha Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers sent him away while he was going to be to be nursed by her sister Ummu Kathum so the guy he want to enter upon her she said to him before you enter upon me for security reasons so nobody will accuse you that you have been doing boom boom with me go and suckle my sister boobs Ummu Kathum the daughter of Abu Bakr she said suckle him 10 times how many times the coward he said it is abrogated this is after the death of Muhammad so if it's abrogated by five times, how Aisha is practicing ten times suckling still? Guys, are you following? If the verse is abrogated and the goat ate it, no, no, the goat did not eat it. We can prove it for you. Okay, but Aisha she is practicing abrogated verse. Why? And if you want to say this is during the time of the prophet that would be that would be hilarious that's mean his the prophet agree that Aisha she is ordering men to go and suckle from her sister if he say this is in the time of the prophet the prophet of fufu and sex and boo boo that's mean Muhammad himself, he agreed upon Aisha's decision that her sister, Ummu Karthum, she is going to give her breast to an adult man too. And the man, he could not enter upon Aisha because she did only nurse him three times. There's seven left. Ummu Karthum, she nursed me three times and then fell ill. That's why he, did not, he was not able to do it ten times because he had to do it ten different days. Not in the same time, not like in five minutes. No, you have to come in 10 different days and you have to suck her nipples until you are satisfied. What does that mean, you tell me? So he did it three times and then he could not continue because she got sick. So he was afraid to get Corona. So she that she only nursed me three times. I could not go to see Aisha. So Aisha, she was practicing this for sure. So how it is abrogated and he, she is a practicing 10 times still and how we knew that this is in the time of uh, after Muhammad death very simple because later there's an argument between the wives of uh, 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 of uh, uh, Muhammad Aisha and the other wives about if this is should be done for us we are the wives of the Prophet or this is only for that women or Muslim women obviously if Muhammad is alive they can ask him is that for all of us or only for specific people? Hmm? They were fighting over it. Obviously, Muhammad is dead. Let me see the hadith where they are fighting over it. Hold on, give me a second.
Here we go, read carefully. So Aisha here, here they are mentioning five times suckling. Here they are mentioning uh, five times suckling. Who Aisha wanted to see, who wanted to visit her, so he had to do suckling. Uh, through her might, uh, uh, might be of age. Then he visited her. But Ummu Salama and all the other wives of Muhammad refused to allow anyone to visit them. Bases in breastfeeding. Unless it was a breastfeeding for someone who was a child. They did not follow this madness of Muhammad. And they said to Aisha, well, this is, must be a license only for Sahla, not for all of us. Obviously, Aisha shouldn't agree. So look what happened here. Allah, he make a verse saying 10 times suckling only for, for Ummu, Ummu uh, uh, Sahla, for Sahla. And then Allah, he make it five for Sahla too. <laughs> but Sahla, she did already. And then Muhammad, he died. And now they are fighting if this is only for all of them or only for a specific people. And as you see, they are practicing breastfeeding for adult even after his death. So your defense is amazing. Aisha, she did not, my friend. She is not the one who destroyed the verse. And, you know, he said that we memorize the verse of, of stoning to death. Did he say that? Question. If you memorize it, why Allah he abrogate recitation then? What is the point of this garbage? If you memorize it, so what Allah did nothing. Get, listen carefully, guys. Allah abrogated the recitation of the verse, but you memorize it. So what the point? What is going to hurt your God, your prophet, your religion to keep the verse which Allah He sent? You Muslim, you claim that you preserve the Quran. Okay, you know what? Put it there. Actually, Omar he said the following. If he added, this is what we consider a corruption. Omar said, I'm afraid that after a long time has passed, people may say, we do not find the verses of a regime. So it's not for the benefit of Muslims to have it taken off. We cannot find it in the holy book. And consequently, they may go astray by leaving an obligation that Allah has revealed. Lo, I confirm the penalty of Rajam, which means stoning. Okay. So he confirmed it. It was a verse. Show us where in the Quran or in the Hadith, your prophet said this verse recitation is abrogated. Is that fair, guys? This is the challenge. This is the end of the video. As long as it's abrogated, you have to show us where. Where your prophet, he said, the stoning to death verse is abrogated as recitation. Do you have a hadith saying that? If not, that's when you are a potato. And it doesn't make sense because you need this verse. You are practicing this verse. So why you want to why, why you wanna cancel recitation? What is that? So recite the verse about hummus. Oh, the kafirun, I don't eat what you eat and you don't eat what I eat and I will never eat what you eat and you will not do eat what I eat and I will never do eat what you eat because you don't eat my feet, what I, I eat and I will not eat what you eat for I have my food, you have yours. So you recite such a stupid chapter but this verse is hurting your feeling and you don't know what to, to, to have it in the Quran. So where Allah, he said, don't put it in the Quran, show us. Where Allah, he said, this verse, I want you to show me this verse saying, don't because in order to know which verse to put there, what verse not to take off, you have to show us reference. They don't have anything. It's a garbage religion. And as you see, Umar al-Khattab is afraid. Why is afraid? People will not find it, which means this is wrong. This is what causes trouble. So why Allah want to cause a trouble taking a verse from the Quran? And especially this is about capital punishment. It's about death. This is not about uh, whipping somebody in his back five times. This is about death stoning to death very harmful very harsh punishment so why he want to take it off doesn't make sense why Allah want to take off the breastfeed for adult if Aisha after the death of Muhammad is a practice in it it's a clear evidence that those verses taken in purpose by people who they are ashamed of Islam breastfeeding for adult five time or ten time we cannot find it 
And this guy, he agreed that this is abrogated. So why he don't practice it? And why he don't recite it for us? As long as the 10 verses, oh, we Muslim, we memorize the Quran. No, you don't. Actually, you just agreed that your God, Allah, is a liar. Because the Quran says, any verse we abrogate and cause to be forgotten. Read it. So how you remember it? According to your God, when he abrogate verses, he do one of two things. Either he abrogate them, which means he will give you instead something, and still you will have it there. And the verse saying that clearly, I will explain it. Or cause you to be forgotten. But you said you don't forget. No, you do. You cannot memorize for me the chapter of breastfeed for adult 10 time. I challenge you. I challenge you to recite it. And I challenge you to recite the one five time. So we want the five time and the 10 time. If you could not, that means you are an idiot liar. Now, Allah says, any revelation we abrogate or we cause to be forgotten, we bring something better or similar. Okay. Allah, he abrogate the verse of stoning to death. Allah, he abrogated or abrogate recitation. Did he give something similar? Because abrogation is abrogation. If you say it's abrogated by recitation, which is a very stupid idea, well, he should give you something better or at least similar. And here you see the stupidity. Allah is saying he will give Quran better than the Quran. Have you ever heard of a donkey speak better than this donkey? His name is Allah. If you are going to give me Quran better than the Quran, that means Allah quality change. For he make better Quran. So the Quran we have today, Allah can make better than this Quran. Allah is in competition with himself. And look how stupid more he is. He's bigger donkey now. He said, or similar. Have you ever heard of a stupid excuse like this? So imagine, I'm going to say something in the, in the, in the screen. Hmm. I like Fifi with Mimi. Not alone. Okay. I like Fifi with Mimi, not alone. This is the verse, the chapter of Fifi. Allah is going to make something similar now. Something what? Similar. Let us make something similar. I like Mimi with Fifi. Not alone. Okay. Well, you just said you will make similar. Okay, this is similar. So what the point? Anyone can tell me? It says we will make something similar. I mean, how stupid this is. is. If it is similar, why you want to abrogate it? The answer is very simple. Muhammad cannot recite the same verse twice correctly. So people start laughing at him. This guy, you don't remember what he said yesterday. The answer is ready. Allah, he said to me, any verses we cause to be forgotten. Muhammad admit that he is forgetting the Quran. Claiming that Allah caused it to be forgotten, but don't worry, be happy. Allah will send something better, which is very stupid to say. Or similar, which is a, a, a crazy. Imagine you have a house, three bedroom and the kitchen. Now I'm going to burn your house and I will make a three bedroom and the kitchen the same exactly. So what the point of this? Stupidity. Just to cover his ass for he is a false prophet. Even the hadith confirmed that Muhammad he forget the Quran. Let me see if I can find you the hadith in this website here. Read carefully. He, he, can he, he will say this is weak. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Allah Messenger, 
heard a man reciting the Quran at night and said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him, as he reminded me of such and such verses, of such and such surahs, which add I was caused to forget. Anyone knows what does that mean? Muhammad is a fraud. Because in the Quran, Muhammad he said that Allah told him, We are going to recite your Quran and you will not forget it. How you say Allah? Stupid website. How you say Allah, He promised you that you will never forget the Quran, chapter 87, verse number 6. Do you see it? We shall make you recite the Quran so you, Muhammad, you will not forget it. The Muslim, they say, if Allah, Allah is God, if He said be, is going to be, so Muhammad, He will never forget the Quran. But remember, this is Sahih al-Bukhari and this is Quran. Both of them must be very accurate. Muhammad himself admitting that he forgot the Quran. And this is, exists in many, many hadith, which means it's very authentic. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5038. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5037. Sahih Muslim, Hayat number 788A. Sahih Bukhari again, Hadith number 5042. <laughs> Sahih Bukhari again, Hadith number 6335. But the Quran says, you will never forget Quran. No, brother. We remember the verses. No, you don't. Recite for me the chapter of a breastfeeding, you coward. I want Fifi to make a video. There's nothing in the video except reciting two verses. Chapter of, of verse feeding, breastfeeding, nipples feeding for adult ten time, and nipples feeding for five time for adult. I want to hear it. Otherwise, you are a fraud. And as you see, Aisha, she's practicing that. And as you see, Muhammad, he forgot Quran. If the Prophet of Islam forgot the Quran, so you depend on who? You depend on those who heard the Quran? What if this guy is making things up and he had in word? Muhammad, he forgot it totally. He just remember, oh, this is yeah, I said before. How we know that this is true? And when God, he says, I will make you recite and you will never forget, well, God, he do promise he keep his promise and as you see Muhammad he forgot the Quran totally thank you guys for being here we are going to be live on air in the other account which is uh, uh, quality of life if you like to join us there we have a good quality time we will not talk about the garbage of Muhammad and this cult so if you like to join us I will take just a break for maybe 10-15 uh, uh, minutes make some uh, uh, some tea and if you like to join us, uh, feel free, I will be there. And the topic today is going to be about if uh, fate, fate is real or not real. Because somebody sent me this question, and obviously he is kind of uh, confused. Uh, fate is real, destiny is real. We will see if this is true or not. All right. So join us, we will be there in 15 minutes uh, max and uh, if you like the topic again it is going to be the quality of life let me post the link for you for easy access and don't forget to please to subscribe there in case you are not subscribed yet thank you god bless you and see you soon don't forget please to download this video because as, as you know we don't keep it here for long and i hope you guys you save the reference thank you christ is lord and we get them busted all the time take care